Upon returning to their apartment, they climb the stairs while Sheldon tells Leonard that if the stair steps are off by two millimeters, most people will trip. Doing his experiment, he tripped his father. At the top of the stairs, they spot Penny who is moving into the apartment across the hall from them. Leonard and Sheldon agree that she is an improvement over their old neighbor, Louis Lawis, who, according to Sheldon, was a 200-pound transvestite with a skin condition. After Penny spots them, they exchange two rounds of high. Penny learns that they are her neighbors from across the hall. She offers to have coffee with them later. Back home, Leonard thinks they should invite her over for lunch, though Sheldon tells him that, except for Howard and Raj, people don't come over. Penny is invited over to their apartment after a roundabout invitation that includes mentioning the health of one sperm bank. Are you still mad about the sperm bank? No. You want to hear an interesting thing about stairs? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> if the height of a single step is off by as little as two millimeters, most people will trip. I don't care. Two millimeters? That doesn't seem right. No, it's true. I did a series of experiments when I was 12. My father broke his clavicle. Is that why they sent you to boarding school? No, that was a result of my work with lasers. <laughs> New neighbor? Evidently. Significant improvement over the old neighbor. 200-pound transvestite with a skin condition? Yes, she is. <laughs> Hi. 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 We don't mean to interrupt. We, we live across the hall. Oh, that's nice. Oh, no, I, we don't live together. I mean, we live together, but in separate heterosexual bedrooms. Oh, okay. Well, guess I'm your new neighbor, Penny. Oh, Leonard, Sheldon. Hi. 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 <laughs> well, uh... Oh, welcome to the building. Oh, thank you. Maybe we can have coffee sometime. Oh, great. 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 <laughs> well, uh, bye. 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 <laughs> Should we have invited her for lunch? No, we're going to start season two of Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> we already watched the season two DVDs. Not with commentary. <laughs> I think we should be good neighbors. Invite her over, make her feel welcome. We never invited Louis slash Louise over. <laughs> and that was wrong of us. We need to widen our circle. I have a very wide circle. <laughs> I have 212 friends on MySpace. Yes, and you've never met one of them. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. <laughs> I'm gonna invite her over. I'll have a nice meal and Chat. Chat? But we don't chat, at least not offline. Well, it's not difficult. You just listen to what she says, and then you say something appropriate in response. To what end? Hi. Again. Hi. 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 Anyway, um, we brought home Indian food. And, um... I know that moving can be stressful, and, and I find that when I'm undergoing stress, that good food and company can have a comforting effect. Also, curry is a natural laxative, and I don't have to tell you that you know, a clean colon is just one less thing to worry about. Leonard, I'm no expert here, but I believe in the context of a luncheon invitation, you might want to skip the reference to bowel movements. Oh, you're inviting me over to eat? Uh, yes. That's so nice. I'd love to. Great. So, what do you guys do for fun around here? Well, today we tried masturbating for money. 